Welcome to the 18th Discourse in this private podcast series. It is October 10th, 2020. We will now talk about relationships. The first thing that I'm going to mention is that beginning about five years ago, I began to talk about this topic and it attracted quite the following. However, at that time, I did not anticipate that that following would be the very last kind of consciousness that I would want to attract to my content. People that were already polarized on one level, heading towards hatred, and once a demographic starts hating on one group, be it women or another group, it's not very difficult for that same demographic to begin to hate other groups or other kinds of men. So what I want to say in the beginning is that there's a lot of content that I created with the intention of helping men and women understand relationships from a higher perspective, a more spiritual perspective. And instead of those types of people finding my content, it were the types of people that were already becoming radicalized, polarized, and increasingly racist. Predominantly a white audience, and in some cases a black audience, but very easy for today's audience to point the finger at foreigners and ethnic minorities as the root of their problems. And so as someone who is a, who is a son of an ethnic father and a son of a white woman, attracting that kind of audience to me also attracted people to me that would insult me and race bait, making negative comments about my appearance and other things. But I think that it's important in this um, ape android society to talk about the things that we see because it's a part of our own spiritual evolution. And so centering on one of the topics, which was the subject of one of the early videos that I shared for the public, why I don't chase the women of today's day and age. Now, there's a number of different topics that I can recount, and I'm doing this without notes, but I think that it's important for me to continue speaking on a regular basis. I spent years in the public eye and on cable access in the city of my birth. And I was seeking someone to appreciate me for me. I wasn't wealthy. I wasn't a player. I wasn't trying to run some kind of a game. To me, in my mind, it's simple. Just simply share who you actually are. As they say, be yourself. But I'm talking about that in a literal interpretation not just a figure of speech. And so I was being myself. And I spent a number of years looking for love in all the wrong places, online dating ads in the form of Craigslist. And at one point, people were just going through me and I was going through them in a short amount of time. And it was all about the illusion of status. There was a period in which I seemed to be reaching the most amount of people on cable access. There was the potential maybe in some people's mind that maybe one day I would be someone and be someone of, uh, of wealth. After all, a lot of people could see the abilities that I had, but some people would look at that and go, not so much look at the soul within me, but look at the ability of that to make a higher income or to get a job somewhere. Later on with YouTube, it became easy for people to take for granted um, this type of content because now there's so much of it. But there was a, a brief period in history to where I could use it to my advantage to gain a date. Now, that was very short-lived. And a period came in which I had no job anymore. And I didn't have a stable place to live that affected my show and the stability of the content 
Thus it affected me. And I was poor. And I was stressed out. And at one point I became homeless. And it would be during that period in which I created that video. Why don't chase the women of today's day and age? And it centered on the consciousness of the women today in a brutally honest way. Now, what this does is this conversation opens up the door to other topics and isn't so much about bashing women, but communicating to women as well as men a unique perspective on relationships that's rarely heard. So the central theme, and I can go back and add a transcript of some of what was in that video, perhaps at a later point in time. But the central theme was values, was how backwards the world is, where you can show the world what your values are and see what comes about from it. And to truly understand why in this world and in this dimension, nice guys finish last. Some of the other themes in some of the other videos, again, many of them no longer listed, dealt with the paranormal theme. And it's the idea that humankind is under the control of something, something that seeks to enslave the human species. As a result of that, the sex drive is very much manipulated by other forces of intelligence. And so as I begin to travel outside of the city of my birth in an RV, into the mountain range area, no longer the same guy, but a new guy seeking a new way of life, I was spilling the beans, so to speak, and I had yet to truly be slandered and harassed as I would come to be later on by many, many men. Not women, mind you, but men. And so here I am speaking about the spiritual warfare that seeks to enslave our species, that seeks to manipulate us through relationships, and things would happen to me that would cause me to shut my mouth and private those videos. And so in reflection on that, which is one of the main themes of this video, one of the main points that has to be communicated here and now, certain truths are so powerful that people will emerge, circumstances will come about to cause that person to think twice about sharing their deepest understandings. Another video discussed men being enslaved by the archons or the lower entities of this world when they're being controlled by their own lust. And so in this sense, I went beyond blaming women or my own problems and was seeking to give a deeper level of spiritual relationship advice to the suffering male humanoid in existence today, how to free themselves from this world by freeing themselves from lust. And in all the spiritual traditions that are out there, lust is one of those, if you will, seven deadly sins that we must overcome if we are to overcome and evolve beyond this world. And so on one video, I was discussing this and many men in their wiring, again, the body consciousness that is of this world that is not necessarily tapped into our higher self, but is tapped into our lower self, has a certain wiring within it to procreate, to constantly be in search of fornication, and in that sense, constantly in search of a woman or partner that will willingly fornicate with them. And so in doing so, they become a slave to, say, in certain circumstances, a job in the city to earn a certain income, to perhaps have a house and have a apartment to attract a certain person into their life as opposed to living free and walking the spiritual path. And it would take time for this to really start to offend people.
Now, when it comes to the internet and many people being addicted to the internet, one of the things that leads to that is polarization, division. And in a documentary that was recently released on Netflix entitled Social Dilemma, engineers and employees of the big tech social media companies discuss this with great detail. So it's not just my theory. And so I went into this in a very innocent way, thinking that I could just simply speak my mind and I could draw the right people to me, maybe even the right potential female friends that were appreciating my open-hearted sharing. And what I found was the hashtag, the acronym for that style of content, which had a superstition I won't repeat here, because there's so much darkness surrounding the people that subscribe to that content. There was a heavy white supremacist, anti-ethnic sediment within that hashtag, within that acronym. Many men blaming foreign men or darker men for their problems, predominantly as white men, with women. So no longer just blaming women, but also blaming foreigners. And with claims of a white genocide in existence, the theory of the existence or non-existence of white people in certain areas, or the end of white people, something that is very much used to create panic and fear that leads to greater and greater levels of control and discrimination and racism on minority populations. And so instead of it being a organic, healthy spiritual conversation about relationships and true spiritual evolution, it led to a very, very dark place. So many men have become radicalized in other directions, even if they're black. There are many African Americans that are part of the the type of content that I've just described that have become radicalized in their own way and have found scapegoats in their own way. And so the general theme here is a lack of interest in self-improvement and true spirituality and an increase in finger pointing. An increase in various different types of radicalization where it becomes a subculture. And it's actually quite sad. Because out of all the different topics that I covered over the many years, the people involved in that subgenre would be the people that would remember me most. Some people would be drawn to the drama of watching. My channel, because of all the content that was there, the unique insights that I had, the fact that I became homeless and began to speak out about my views on relationships, and the fact that I uprooted myself in conjunction with also demonstrating, protesting against a cuddle house, the idea of um, cuddles being sold for money, something that gained the interest, not the ire, but the interest of many, many men. And so initially they were interested in seeing my demonstrations, my protests, hearing my words, very unique, very off the cuff, but being also very turned off by hearing the other ideas that I had and watching my struggles going off the grid. Because one of the things that I came to understand about men that don't have women in their lives, they act like they're living in a prison. And you know what happens to men in prison? They're often raped by other men. With the removal of women, with the isolation, and many men with many issues stacked on top of each other, this psychology somehow begins to reflect itself on the internet and on websites and places where people are talking about their problems without a spiritual lens, without any balance, without any higher consciousness. 
So it's at this point in my own human history that many of those videos that have the potential to help some people have that light bulb go off above their head so they can continue evolving as souls while they're in human form, many of those videos are privated because it simply attracted the wrong crowd and put me into a box. A box that I don't want to be in. But today feels right to reflect upon some of those topics. Another video surrounded the theme that as more men are rejected by women, good men, but not not so much just women, but institutions within our society rejected from work opportunities, pushed out of tribes, if you will, pushed away from cities, exiled in their own way, shape, or form, that there's actually a much larger ramification wave that follows that. And it's the reality of cities becoming increasingly unsafe. Women becoming increasingly unsafe. One of the things that I would talk about, which many people in that subgenre were against, was the idea of protecting women because I was talking about for many, many years what I felt would happen to the United States if we were invaded by China and or Russia, perhaps other nations. It would be a rise in human trafficking or even just simply a breakdown in our society, even without an invasion, would naturally cause an uptick in women being kidnapped, sexually assaulted, maybe in some cases sold on the black market. And it's ultimately the type of future that I see emerging. And so it wasn't so much me just talking about my own problems or my own desires or my own experiences, but it being a microcosm of the macrocosm and ultimately what I saw coming and how men and women of today's society could prepare for the world of tomorrow. Because I'll be honest, I was, a, uh, as they call it, an idealist. And I believed early on, if I kept sharing from the heart, that eventually I would attract good people and good women and good men to me. And maybe even be able to organize people. Maybe in certain areas, maybe an off-grid, self-sufficient situation where people are preparing to live without the dollar, to live without the easy flow of resources. Later on, of course, things begin to happen to me, slander, and other types of attacks that would cause me to lose faith in this human species and no longer put myself out there in an attempt to attract an online family. I would wake up, if you will, and while it's not a romantic relationship, I would be eventually living as I am now with my best friend who happens to be female. who saw the essence of my message and how it never should have been put into the box of that hashtag or acronym and how many of the people that are overtly drawn to that box or acronym are not spiritual men or easily misled into blaming women for their problems and not wanting to help women see the light nor are they speaking any other truth that deals with a larger picture. They're just simply in their lower self. And that's a bad box to be in. So that's why I stopped contributing content online to that subgenre. But as we see collapse now in the COVID lockdown period, as we see an increase in crime, and in some cases in some major cities, women coming under attack or being sucker punched in the face, as we seem to be sleepwalking closer and closer to World War III, as we even see domestic terror groups targeting their own political opposition, whether it be Antifa or the left or more recently, 
the governor of Michigan. These are also examples of men hunting or attacking women as we approach collapse in the society. So as I look at the events that are taking place right now in our world, I see confirmation. I see validation on so many different levels. And instead of that making me feel good, it's actually something that brings me a lot of concern. I don't want to be right about everything. So the main points that I was making were that we have to prepare in our independent communities to protect women, even if they're not our family members, even if they're just simply neighbors, because the nature of human consciousness is evil, apparently, more evil than I thought also. It's not good at its essence. And the main thing that I came to understand is despite my many years of warning about the coming collapse and the threat to women's safety, women could hardly be found in any way, shape, or form telling me either to my face or online that they appreciated the content that I was creating. They couldn't be found saying that they appreciated me warning the public about these things that were to come. If anything, I think society saw me as a false prophet. And that hurt. I carried that with me for many, many years. The people in that subgenre would refer to, from their understanding, what I was describing, they would refer to as white knighting. And white knighting is something that they frowned upon, i.e. the idea of helping women or wanting to impress women as they would see it in their shallow mindset by trying to help them or save them from threats in this world as if they were coming from some sort of psychology that they should get a blowjob or some sort of affection in order to do anything for them. So I wasn't coming at it from that angle. I was coming at it from a perspective of something like a grandfather or an uncle or a friend of the family, a member of society that sees other people in this society, in this country, in this world as a part of my tribe in some way, shape, or form, a world in which I feel something's coming in spirit and feel that I have an obligation to communicate Kate, to the people listening that there's many things that they're concerned about and that they read about on the mainline conspiracy theory websites or the regular news, but there's the elephant in the room that they're not seeing. There's a calculation that they've forgotten that when we go through a collapse, the world's oldest profession comes back rearing its ugly head. And that is the buying and selling of women. And that's not right for us to fall so far back. Perhaps I'm the ignorant one for thinking that we ever evolve beyond that kind of reality. But is there something wrong with being a idealist with wanting to help? If we try to answer that question by measuring how people have treated me, and responded to me, then the answer is yes. Then apparently there was something wrong with me trying to help the men see. When I was younger also in my 20s, moving into my late 20s, early 30s, there was a part of that youth mixing with older wisdom, coming together in a fusion, that we have strength for a reason. And that strength should be used for the right purpose. Not misdirected into sports, sports games and the television and video games. That we are a society where many people don't have a natural rite of passage. I would talk about the world of adult entertainment as well, another topic. And I would bring up the point that there are more women performing in hardcore pornography than there are women speaking truth about the things that are taking place. Now, there are many more YouTubers now that are female speaking disinformation 
promoting right-wing talking points, but that's not the truth. I'm talking about the truth, about the things that are actually taking place on this planet without a left-right lens or paradigm. And so I would be having my own wake-up. And it would be as if there's a part of me that's from another time and place, whether it be this world or another, where humankind, womankind, mankind is not as corrupt. Where they have their shit together. When they recognize that someone good is among them, that they should help or provide assistance to. And all I've seen from the outreach and the sharing of my ideas is evil looking back at me. If not, pure silence. Silence that waits and watches, watches and waits, and determines how to affect me the most and shut me up. And it wouldn't come all at once. The slander wouldn't take place all at once. But eventually, evil people would come around that had a strong interest in that subgenre, who were lonely men themselves, incomplete, immature, taken over by the darkness of this world, but happened to be existing in conspiracy theory genres. And me being naive, even as recently as several years ago, it really took me until the last year or two, but especially year, to realize that there's basically no hope that I can see with today's online audiences. Because this is not just about relationships between men and women, this is relationships between each other. And if I don't have positive relationships with any members of the audience that can see that I've been targeted, that have the maturity and the intuition to realize what's been done to me, if they don't have the compassion to send me an email and ask me how I am, acknowledging that I've put out good content over the years and I was attacked as a result of it, then there's no point in continuing on those same mediums online, at least, to continue speaking and just sharing and sharing and sharing. But it's also been weighing on me that I haven't been talking about these things for a while and that I should still be communicating for my own mental health here and now. So there is something about the evil of this world that will target truth speakers. And in this world of social hierarchy, the ape android will attack those individuals that it sees or perceives to be less than them automatically without realizing that they're under their own form of control, not even realizing why they're doing what they're doing to that person. So some of the things that I've talked about with regards to the cosmos and the sun affecting human consciousness have resulted in me being targeted. As a result of talking about this third world war to come in which the nation's defenses may be breached, leaving many women, especially in many of these cities, defenseless against these invading armies where many men have been turned against them and many women have been turned against the men. The the gender war, as I've been describing for years, has all been a part of a agenda to destroy us. That also seemed to result in some of my targeting. And again, the theme that there is a purpose in rising above lust and these ridiculous demands that are placed upon the opposite sex. So the things that women need to know about men and the things that men need to know about women from a spiritual perspective. These things and more I shared for years. And instead of those spiritual ideas being understood on a deeper level, the things that people saw as shortcomings within me or the weakness within me for wanting to live off grid and be away from society, that is what they remembered the most. And when I chose to get some distance from people, when I chose to stop talking to certain people that I never should have talked to to begin with, that's when people felt that they had the right to attack me. As if they had the right to demand of me my attention. 
and my association or my friendship when these people didn't know the first thing about respecting another human being. What they saw was a world in which there are people that are higher, there are people that are lower, and people need to know their place. And many people, I wouldn't call them men, but many of these males would treat me a particular way based on how they saw me. Based on physicality, based on height, based on ethnicity, based on income. And so they would see me as very low on the totem pole and treat me accordingly and use in many ways the spiritual insights and ideas that were challenging their programming against me. So one would think that the group that I would really be offending all these years would be women. It really turned out to be men. And when I would vocalize this, it seemed to make many of these men even angrier and almost trigger certain types of retaliatory behavior against me, such as putting out my information, the city I was living in, and labeling me a incel, which is a a term associated with men that can't get laid. Instead of acknowledging the spiritual ideas that I was discussing, which included no longer seeking, no longer placing dating ads, choosing to go my own way and move in a more spiritual direction, which I've been doing for a number of years. It's been a number of years now since I've even been with someone because I'm not seeking. I'm not posting dating ads. And that's because the level of consciousness that I've come across in the opposite sex has dropped quite a bit. Now, I want to address that, the influence of technology over women. It's easier now than ever for women to sell themselves on technology or on these social media websites. Forget dating apps and websites. You take a look at Instagram and in certain demographics or cities, for example, you can type in a place and the top posts will rise to the top. In many cases, it'll be some of these women that have put Botox in their lips or certain parts of their body doing these selfies in their bathroom, showing their ass, and it's like a prostitution ad where it's overtly sexual. It's all about their body. And you got to ask yourself, what type of men do they think that they're going to attract? A nice guy? an honorable guy or a pimp or a guy who's going to basically be a John who's going to try to impress them with his money. And so the things that I was talking about a few years ago about men being replaced by cell phones, women using cell phones to manipulate men has gone into hyperdrive with the many types of websites that are out there. With regards to dating apps, I've never been on a actual modern dating website and used it to actually find someone, but it's apparently much more superficial than the old days with a Craigslist post where you may have to read a paragraph or two about that person's personality or what they're looking for. Now it's first their image and their stats, age, demographic details, perhaps occupation, without any real statements about them as a person. And so modern dating apps are much more about the superficial at the beginning of the conversation, what they see first. Next to, as I said, Instagram, to where all it is is just an image of that person engaged in a selfie focused only on their physicality. And see, in this backwards realm, which is a phrase that I've used for many, many years, to describe this world in true Gnostic fashion, a backwards realm where things are backwards, where up and down and down is up, right? People claim that they want someone stable in their life, that they want someone to rely on. And when they don't find that, they bitch about that and they have a whole subgenre about that and they have polarization online where people on both the left and the right, male and female, have their subgenres to where 
they share these negative attitudes and angry perspectives on either the political polarization, the opposite of what they are, or perceived to be opposite, or the opposite gender. So feminists against the men and men against the women without any conversation about the things that everyone needs to be conscious of. And with spiritual values and insights, true spiritual evolution removed from the conversation and retaliation energy and resentment being number one and people really coming together over that polarization. And so you have people out there that are unhappy with their relationships, but yet the people that they sought to begin with weren't good people. They never went about it right. For example, with a woman seeking out a man who makes a certain amount of money or will talk to them a certain way. For example, nice guys finish last, but a guy who's a player who might treat women like shit, something about their biology might be turned on by that. And later on when they have kids or when they get married or something to that effect, they get upset that they're with that person or they feel stuck with that person without any personal accountability for their actions that led to them spreading their legs with that person. A man, for example, might be complaining about women because he's not getting laid or complain about someone that left him after he easily met someone and started having sex with someone, and after a period of time, she's having sex with someone else, without that person being accountable on the personal level, that they sought out a whore, basically. Somebody that, you know, I want to use my language loosely, as I did in the past, hopping from cock to cock to cock, <laughs> basically. And so if someone is actively seeking that out, or people at nightclubs, or people that are loose, or people that do drugs really easily, or people that like to party. Who's to say that that person isn't going to be attracted to somebody else who's going to give them a bigger party? If someone's attracting a woman who's impressed by the act of violence, or the guy who seems to be the toughest in the room, why wouldn't that woman be attracted later to someone else who seems tougher? And so people play games and manipulate in order to attract what they want in the moment while ignoring many other good people that are out there, completely bypassing them, completely going around certain levels of values. And so in a lot of different ways, bringing up another theme here, because women are in control here. They are in control of a lot of things in which a lot of men, just by their nature, are willing to have sex with most things, with most women. Whereas the women are in a position to be much pickier and it's a reflection of our modern society for better or for worse. And so women have the opportunity to make the world a better place. If they were choosing men that were actively involved in trying to make the world a better place, ending the wars, and I'm not a proponent of war or violence, but there certainly isn't a movement of people that truly want to wage war on those that are a part of the control structure. I don't think that more conflict is the answer, but hypothetically, let's say that it was. In this world of tribes and gangs and divisions, notice that there really isn't one that wants to take on the systems of control. You can't count today's social justice movements because there's plenty of disenfranchised humans and victims of war that are never spoken of by today's rioter. So that's not the right example. Probably a better example would be a more conscious movement of men and women that are that are shining the light on the 
organization of evil in today's society outside of religion, but talking about the oppression of certain nation states and how from a bipartisan level, it just keeps continuing and continuing. And so we have a society that easily forgets about other people. It's like it's a vampire society. It seems to care for a few years when it's trending, when people are marching in the street and it's like a mob expression, and much of that can't be controlled and directed by technology and the media. But you don't really see a gathering of men and women that want to make the world a better place. So as a result, you don't have children growing up in households that want to make the world a better place. It's an animal kingdom, really. It's a world of consumers. And metaphorically speaking, and in some cases literal, it's a cannibal society where humanity is eating itself, not choosing to help itself or heal itself or lift up those that are oppressed the most. It's a cannibal society that is eating itself. And again, I think it all comes back to the central theme of something dark within us. And so it doesn't necessarily have to be seen as a conspiracy coming from on high, but something within us that allows these genocides. And so we have... A population, whether you call them sheep or something else, but it's a population of humanoids, ape humanoids, that are fornicating, making copies of themselves, duplicating themselves, but yet not becoming more conscious. And in some examples, we can see a more conscious society 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So often it seems that there's an element of our society that is seeking to outbreed the conscious ones or the peaceful ones, where there truly is a war on consciousness. And the warmongers, the destroyers, the barbarian consciousness seems to be dominant. And so these are not ideas that I hear today when people talk about relationships or when people talk about consciousness And it's certainly not talked about in today's social justice movements, which are, again, often exhibiting their own controlling behavior, engaging in property destruction, and silent about many, many other people that are bombed back to the Stone Age. These movements that are incredibly inclusive and in reality are only creating more of a right-wing backlash against minority populations around the world. And so actually, as we see these things unfolding in the news, I'm seeing confirmation of things that I'm warning about in this podcast series, in this private discourse. The things that I've warned about coming to pass. And personally, it's a very difficult time, being that I also struggle with nightmares. So there's a mix of intuition within me that expresses itself in the dream state. And there's also a certain amount of psychic attack or dream invasion, intrusion into my consciousness, where the lower self or the part of the subconscious that is affected by fear and these other things creates these elaborate scenarios. So I struggle with knowing what is a vision, what is a psychic impression, And what is something else? But it makes clear sense to me now why the world is as it is. And that ultimately, the human species is evil and corrupted. It's within our genetics. There's a certain natural flow to salmon, for example, or fish in a river. There's a flow to nature. And there's an actual natural flow of human consciousness. The way it flows naturally. And it isn't in a peaceful direction. It's in a very tribal direction. 
It's placing things that are different from the hive mind, collective consciousness level, below them and trampling upon the weak. And so women, if they wanted to, they could change the world and change our reality as we know it because we're a society that's making copies of itself. It's duplicating itself at a rapid rate, like a virus. And so one would think if people of a higher consciousness were to move their genetics forward at a more rapid rate than the destroyer consciousness, then maybe we could see some real change in the world, a change in the value systems, a change in the culture. But we're not seeing that. We're seeing a society that thinks that it's evolving, but it's revolving around back in a circle, around and around and around. These things that appear to be revolutions under the guise of social justice are only creating circumstances that will create more violence and more division and more oppression. And therein lies why one on the spiritual path might opt to rise above their lust and rise above procreation and love for this world and love for someone else when they realize the true nature of this world. That we're living in some sort of a cosmic biological war machine. And not only is the world some sort of a machine, so is the body. The body is not something to worship, whether it be ours nor someone else's. This machine is corrupt. And it's not going away. So I don't know how we bring down the machine. What seems to be the mindful path is to seek the knowledge as to how we evolve beyond living in this type of a machine. I believe this knowledge and these ideas must be shared with the world to help people reevaluate why they seek what they seek or to help pull them back from their unhealthy relationships and to help them realize why they're unhappy in those relationships, even if they're with someone, even if they're having sex with someone, even if they've had children with someone. There's a deeper reason why they're unhealthy and unhappy. I think that we can learn a lot from children, why we see that evil nature in children, children that bully each other from an early age on and will gang up on a smaller one or one that is different. We have to ask ourselves, is that something that they're really learning from the world itself? Or is that something that's naturally going to be expressing itself through the incarnations? The humans that are born into this world. Because to be on the spiritual path and to move away from a racist direction or a hateful direction is something that almost seems to be learned or developed or cultivated. The spiritual path is not something that comes automatically. It is something that is maintained. So men and women together have the ability to rise above this level of animalism. But on a collective level, that is not taking place. That is only taking place on the individual level. So I have to suspect that the outcome of focused individual effort is the evolution beyond this type of a world to the type of world that they then are vibrating to. Earning their right, if you will, to evolve beyond the gates of this hell. One has to earn the right. And so these are traditional spiritual ideas that have been around for thousands of years. But the evil forces of this world that operate within womankind, within mankind, will create circumstances that will exile certain individuals from the conversation table. And in the modern day and age, certain websites where people may have been sharing this truth, certain things may happen that will cause that person 
to silence themselves. Because I knew for years I was definitely hitting on a nerve and exposing in many ways the arcana control over human life in a way that many people were not, going where other commentators were not. And I knew in the back of my consciousness that there could be consequences in this physical world for me. Knowing that there's an untold amount of people, an unknown amount of people, that were waking up and having that light bulb go off above their head and thus making better decisions, freeing themselves in small steps. Hearing the words that they needed to hear. Letting them know if they were already on the spiritual path that they weren't alone. And so in many cases, there was a sense of connection. But it didn't thus mean that those people would turn around and be my friends. It didn't mean that those people would remember what I taught them. It doesn't mean that those people wouldn't then be swayed by their lower self or the evil of others when I would be slandered or put into a box. And so somebody can help other people indefinitely and overlook the ways in which they need to help themselves. There's no point in just continuing to give and give and give when all it does is hurt us or cause us to feel crucified upon the cross that they have laid out for us. So today, I don't seek to have relationships with other people in the audience. I've privated those videos, but I see value in the nature of the content, and I seek to follow that advice, the things that I talked about, to address the lower self within myself, to have a deeper relationship with that which we call God. And in many ways, the sun, which shines upon our world each and every day. I started this day meditating under the sun, rotating these um, Chinese iron balls counterclockwise and clockwise, tapping into my own chi. Surrounded by the energy of a number of rocks from turquoise to amethyst to obsidian to labradite, others. I'm not interested in being a legend. I'm not interested in being number one. But I don't want to be persecuted by the evil of this world. But I also understand that anything is possible. And seek to rise above fear of even that. As I pray to the true creator of this universe, not the God of this world or the false idols, but the God of this universe to assist me in my passing from the body into the afterlife. So that I can evolve beyond this type of a world. I've always sought someone in my life to make up for the trauma of my childhood. To feel a sense of family. And the person that I'm hanging out with now, that I'm living with now, well, it's not a girlfriend, it's the closest thing that I've ever had to a mother. Or a sister. Or an aunt. A person who truly understands me. A person also who's more intelligent than all the other women that I've met in the past. I can't think of one woman that I've ever laid down with, bedded down with, that also had her own information, who let me interview her. So in a future recording, we're going to hear from my friend and some of the ideas that she has to share regarding uh, relationships and 
the evolution of one's soul. Okay, this concludes today's recording, this 18th private podcast discourse for October 10th, 2020.